two of the Star Wars cards. 2.5 maybe, because I don't even know when to finish these. It's getting very late. It's supposed to be very hot in here. And it's also getting concerning that my cat hasn't caused some type of disaster around me, so I wouldn't be surprised if an asteroid lands on my house. Crunchy. Your chiropractor videos are very hot right now. So, who needs, who needs to go to chiropractor? Who needs those when you'd watch my Star Wars cards? So these are all ones that were in part one. These are another promo card again. I'm actually gonna, I have so many of these. Uh, yeah, they're all the same. But this one's a little different, I think. Um, Maybe not. So, I'm gonna have a couple, like a lot of these junk non-sport cards. Uh, I have like every box, I've got like two, two and a half, three sets. So I'm gonna do a pretty decent giveaway at like 100 subscribers. Either like sports cards, like good rookies, and uh, key cards or key comics or, you know, sets of cards, whatever, uh, the, whoever wins wants, uh, if I get to 100 subscribers, all the same, oh, that's different, we've got a Highlander, um, Christopher Lambert, I never was a Highlander fan, the movie's kind of stupid, like, I like the idea of it, but, man, this, it's not a well-written movie, uh, it, it uh, Christopher Lambert's, is not a particularly great actor. Um, and you had, um, what's his name, Bond there. I don't care why, I can't think. Sean Connery just phoning it in when his lines are so stupid. And just, the Kurgan was the best part, is the best part. Chris, he was actually pretty good in, in uh, The Legend of Gra or Grace Stroke. There's a Legend of Grace Stroke where he was uh, played Tarzan. That, that was pretty good. Um, what else we got here? Nothing, nothing special. I would kill for Fangoria cards. The making of Robocops, Detroit's Dirty Harry. Eddie Murphy's Star Trek Confession, I don't know what that is. Inner Space, Lost Boys, and Next Gen. I can't remember if we saw this card. All right, this one's different. Boba Fett Unmasked. Um, I can't remember the guy that played the original Boba Fett, but he was an older guy. He was on a lot of Western movies in, in the original. When he uh, when he talked, he he had this like kind of cowboy, sound, you know, uh, voice, gruff and uh, kind of badass. And and then in the once the Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones dropped, they added the Australian or New Zealand accent, and it really sucked because the guy that uh, the original voice was so much better. Heavy metal. I'd like to do some, maybe, I, there are heavy metal cards, maybe I'll get some of those. I don't know if I could do them because they might be too inappropriate. Because uh, heavy metal's pretty, uh, has adult themes. The Running Man, I was going to watch that last night. Great, awesome movie. Uh, what else? Uh, Stephen King wrote that. It's a short story. I can't. I know it's quite different. Uh, Amazon Woman on the Moon. Uh, Jerry Anderson's Space Police. I think that was a TV show. Uh, Living Through the Garden. Wow. More chuckles. I'll do a few more packs. That's probably, probably it. It's getting very late. Seen these. This. Uh, Gremlins 2. Why CBS killed Beauty and the Beast? Because it had terrible ratings. That's, that's probably why. Uh, Gremlins 2, the new bet. I love Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2 is wacky. I just. It's. 
is that Kane Kane Peel sketch about Gremlins 2. Um, just the the writers' room bringing in this dude, this flamboyant dude, and he just starts talking about all these just insane things that you know were in the movie. Star Trek Hunt for Red October, not sci-fi at all, um, but it's a great movie directed by um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he did he did Die Hard. Uh, John McTiernan, he did uh, Menace in Man with Sean Connery too, and uh, he's he was in prison for um, tax tax evasion, I believe, or fraud or something like that. Uh, but he made really good movies, very big. They felt big blockbuster type movies in. Career is dead. I would like to see him make another one. And with Total Recall, um, so we're at Forbidden Planet, Starman. Saw John Carpenter um, about a year or two ago. Um, he played a concert in, in Boston, and it was maybe the best concert I've ever been to. You know, he, he played the themes to the movies, and he had that giant HD screen in the back, and. Uh, in a small, small place, and it was just so, so good. Uh, Total Recall, great movie, insane, you know, that, again, a movie like Total Recall would, would be a disaster now. Um, people just don't go to see anything unless it's got the Marvel or Disney stamp on it. It's too bad. Man, he's a creepy looking dude I'm from uh, Dick Tracy. I don't know who that is. A oh, flat top right there. Man, I'm surprised I didn't cry when I watched that as a kid. That's a, that's a very uh, uncanny valley faces in that movie. Flatlines, Rachnophobia. Frank Marshall, Rachnophobia. Uh, another one, it feels like kind of, I think Spielberg produced it. I'm assuming he did. That's why it feels like Spielberg movies. I love Rachnophobia. And it never really gets, um, never hear it talked about at all, ever. And it doesn't get any love, but it's a, it's a really good movie. I've seen this one, this one. I've seen that. What is it? Are the right stuff? Oh. <clears throat> Not sci-fi. I kind. I guess you could. You got any Beemans? That's what he says. Chuck Yeager. That's an excellent. The right stuff is such a good movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's about the early Apollo mission, and um, you know, from the very beginning. But that's the line of the movie. He always has got any Beemans, the beam uh, gone, which I don't think they make anymore. It's like tea berry or something like that. It's, it's really good. Oh, man. All right, David Hasselhoff, Knight Rider. Not, not something I know about or necessarily care about. Um, TV computer character, The Whiz Kids. That sounds familiar. Was that like a PBS type show? Is Greystroke. Search for Spock, Veronica Cartwright, Dreamscape. That was with Triangle Face again, uh, where he can go into different dreams. And uh, it was like a nightmare at the end, if I recall. And uh, not a very particularly good movie. But, you know, not, not so bad either. Uh, I don't know anything about this. I love Battlestar Galactic, the new Battlestar Galactic, it's so good, it's like Lost in Space, not, not Lost, the, uh, not the TV show Lost in Space, but the other show Lost, but in space. Darth Vader Returns, Billy D. Williams, Brian Johnson, Black Hole Robots, Preview Battle Beyond the Stars, it's, I believe, Roger Corman, and it's really Bad, good bad, not something you would watch too.
you know, deconstruct or further your knowledge of the art of cinema or something like that. One of the best movies ever made right here. Close Encounters. Uh, DeForest Kelly on Star Trek. George Powers. Galaxina. Uh, wasn't that with... Not um, Burt Reynolds. I think he's in that where he's like on a... He's like in a weird like toga thingy. Scared to death. Clash of Titans. Don't know those. Exciting changes for Buck Rogers. Return of Mork and Mindy. Now this is the special TV issue. This is all stuff. I don't know this stuff. Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek. Gene Seymour. You know, it's an interesting thing in, in this. Um... When, when Luke goes to Dagobah and he meets Yoda and he's like this, this foolish old man with who's clearly insane, you know, uh, beating R2-D2 with a stick. And then you see that, like, you know, it was kind of a ruse for, for Luke to, um, you know, to see if he was worthy of training and all this stuff or serious. And then in The Last Jedi, when Yoda shows up, he's a friggin' clown again. Like, but... The Yoda being a clown in Empire Strikes Back was, was just a thing for Luke to see if he was ready, so it doesn't make any sense. Any time I have a chance to bash The Last Jedi, I will. The music of John Williams, Fred Freiberger. Jane Seymour. What else? Like Willow. Frame about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I won't say it a third time. Or a little time machine Robocop theories. Hmm, interesting. I guess that's probably theories on the next movie. I have I, I have never seen Willow. I feel like a clown, but I've not seen it. And so it begins my cat. Causing chaos. I don't know why I was always opposed to Willow. I don't hate Val Kilmer. I don't hate little people. Seen these. These before. I'm sure it's great. Ron Howard did it. Anybody wants any of these? Let me know. I should have enough to make two, at least two and a half sets. So here's Clan of the Cave Bear, Daryl, Daryl, Hannah. And, um, anybody, what else we got here? Rob Botin, or I uh, can't, Rob uh, Botin, uh, Legend with. Legend is an awesome movie. Uh, Ridley Scott and Tom Cruise. And it is like as as hyper fantasy as you can get. Like if you think of Game of Thrones and how like low fantasy Game of Thrones, even though it's got dragons and magic, it's very kind of uh, it's got one footed and some type of reality. Um, Legend is like it is like dragon Dungeons and Dragons come to life, and it's got a great soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. It's got unicorns, it's got friggin, you know, demons and, and, and goblins and gilbins and ghouls and geists and spooks and all that type of crap. And it's just, you know, praise Mortis. It's good. Ah, oh, what else? I can't. Back to the Future, Never Ending Story. FX. Explorers. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. There's more FX2. It's a cool movie. It's kind of like a guy's got to use his knowledge of special effects that he did in movies to fight crime or something like that. I remember the clown came to life and I remember he had a lot of cool movie posters in his house like Lucille Fulci's zombie poster, things like that. Lady Hawk, I don't know. Baby, CBS launches 13-hour space epic. I wonder what that was. I don't. 
See this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. It's unfortunate there's only one hologram in this set. But on the other, you know, the other side things is that I don't have to not get two or three of the inserts and go money eBay buy them for some idiot that has a price 36 times what they should be. See all these, no crack. The promo card. Jeez. Ay, ay, ay. Getting down to the bottom here from all these things. You're getting, I haven't seen this one yet. Got the X Wing Fighter being chased by a TIE Fighter. Free blueprints. Uh, what else? Air and Space Museum, NASA, nothing. Nothing too interesting on there. Or this one. Uh, episode issue number 10. The sci fi rock connection. Hmm. I bet it's like um, prog music. Harry Housen interview. There we go, some Tron. Uh, scoring the Conan films. The Conan films had a uh, great soundtrack. Tron. I never, I never cared for Tron. Uh, it was. It, I don't know what year, kind of 82 or something. I was, I don't even think I was born when it came out. And it just, oh, look, there he is. This Conan is here. That's a cool, that's a really cool cover. Uh, Krull, you know, uh, this was a time when these movies were getting hot. These uh, barbarian type movies, sword and sorcery. I wouldn't call it sword, sword, sword and sandal. There's sword and sorcery, and then there's sword and sandal, and then all these like, if you ever went to a video store in the '80s or '90s, you'd go and just be like Barbarian Queen, Deathstalker. I love Deathstalker. I was gonna put Deathstalker on in the background, but it's too. Uh, I'd probably get banned. Um, Deathstalker, Barbarian Queen, um, Eyes of the Serpent, A Tor, uh, Crow, all these type of. Uh, Barbarian sword and sorcery movies. It was the um, yeah. And I wouldn't Excalibur. I wouldn't really put him there. Uh, filming the thing, the cat people. With that's um, <clears throat> guy directed uh, uh, the new one, uh, the Ethan Hawke. What the hell is that? Paul Schrader. I can't remember the name, but I just saw it. And he did. He wrote Taxi Driver. But he's been trying to make Taxi Driver again. Ever since, uh, he's, he also wrote the book *Transcendental Filmmaking* in his twenties. It's, it's good. More of this. Yeah, bad crack. Seen these? I haven't seen that one. Big trouble with time to I should get that shirts and uh, not those boots or those pants. Uh, this was on yesterday and um, you know I love the movie, but going back and you watch Kurt Russell, who I adore Kurt Russell, but his uh, the whole movie is doing the John Wayne impression, and it, it when you realize that it becomes a little yeah. Uh, I don't know why he was doing He could have just been Kurt Russell and been fine. Uh, there's Tim Curry from Legend. Great makeup. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Man, Kurt Carver was just a monster for so long. Just made banger after banger. Just great, great movies. Great soundtrack. 
and then into the 90s, you know, it, he fell off, and now he just sits home and uh, smokes weed and plays video games. He loves video games and uh, watches basketball. That's what he does. Cherry 2000. That's an... Uh, Meg Ryan. Is it Meg Ryan? Is it? Yeah, I think so. It's a cool, weird... I don't even know how to describe it. GoBots. Love me some GoBots. They were cheap. Cheaper than Transformers. Beauty and the Beast TV's new Prince Charming, Ron Perlman. I follow Ron Perlman on Twitter. The dude's a maniac. Um, I like Hellboy um, enough. Um, he seems unstable. Uh, I liked him in Drive as the, uh, the Mafia guy. Who's that? Next Generation is Q. And Captain Power. That was Pure Robocop, Ray Bradbury Theater. Boy, they. I don't know what the hell this is. Tarzan TV show, Eight Man, yeah. 90s, it's, thank God he hit a tree and I never had to watch that. Uh, what else have we got here? Blake Seven, Young Spock, and Teenage Kirk. This gets hot and heavy, you don't want to miss that. Hook. Uh, more thing stuff. I love Hook. Uh, it's, it gets dogged on a lot. A lot of people don't like it. I guess probably because when it came out, I was the perfect age. But it's got that, you know, movie magic feel that Spielberg had. That, that you know, that is really missing now. Um, having that, that twinkle, that, uh, that spell. I guess it's this, you know, that cast on you that is kind of gone. And what you see is you see a lot of people trying to recreate it, but it, it, it's not real. It, it's like a nostalgia thing versus an actual dude making a movie or a, a woman making a movie. And just it having that thing, that special thing that made movies so special for so long. And now it's, it's kind of gone and it's, it's bad that it is. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why certain shows are really popular. Popular, like uh, I think, like Stranger Things, or like the new It movie that came out. Why it resonated with people who didn't grow up in that in the '80s because it had that certain that's that cinema magic to it a little bit. But it was not real because it just kind of nostalgia tripping. It's it's not. Um, natural to the, the process and if you recognize that it becomes una if that it's not natural it becomes a real burden when you're watching these these movies and, and things like that J.J. Abrams is the master at that about, as this kind of fake fake cinema quality to it he's just kind of copying um, even low budget garbage like this has it um, and uh, man Maybe I'll make a, a video on it. I'm sure, no one will. No one will listen to me in uh, real life. So maybe somebody out there will listen. I don't know. Back to the Future Three. It's. It's. I like it. Um, it is what it is. It, it's a fun movie. I think it was kind of panned when it came out, but it. it again, I was at the right age for Back to the Future Three. Um, Michael Ironside and Total Recall, Alienation. That there's a in, in Back to the Future. It, it's interesting. There's that little flourish that um, in the score, um, which I can't do. But if you've seen Back to the Future, that little twinkling sound. Um, it was like a cue, it was a cue to something happening in the movie, and uh, in the movie Ready Player One, which is. If you like it, and it's cool. I, I don't like. I, I think it's pretty bad. It's just kind of. It is the. Um, it is peak nostalgia tripping, and in, in, in it's in a, in a bad way. But they use that in the movie, and uh, they used it to kind of. It was in the score a lot, and it really. How do I say it? It, it added to that magic movie quality that things don't really have as much anymore um 
but it felt so unnatural. It felt so, the whole movie did, but I don't know. I, I'm, my, my brain's starting to go too fast with my mouth, so I'll shut up. Free Jack. Got, what's her name, before she was, uh, had her pants down every night on uh, Sex and the City. Kathy Ireland, whatever, I mean, she was, she was, she was, she was good, man. I don't know what happened to Kathy Ireland. Uh, this role of Jimmy Doohan, John Lovitz, Will Wheaton, Kim Cattrall, that's it. John Lovitz is awesome. I don't know why he's in this, um, what sci-fi movie was, but I, I really like John Lovitz. Um, Anthony Hopkins and Emilio Estevez. They were in Free Jack. Yeah, we got another promo card. And so it begins. The absolute destruction. This is what goes on in this picture. It's the equivalent when my cat gets bored. I get prepared. Thinking machine, incredible shrinking mork. Alright, some new ones. Return of the Jedi. Carry fit, blah blah. Looks like a. Oh yeah, it did get damaged. That's the first card. I noticed that was a little messed up. Blue Thunder, Connery, and more. Some more Return of the Jedi. Batman. Fantasy of Greg Hildebrand. So I'm going to be doing Greg Hildebrand cards soon. And he did the classic Star Wars poster that was the And he's got a. They came up with a bunch of cards in the 90s for him, like they did with Boris and his wife. And um, maybe next week I'll do the Greg Hildebrand cards. That's a cool picture of Superman. The scripting of Superman 3. And, I, and it's just a picture of a friggin' dumpster. Um. Crawl something wicked. This Disney did that, I think. Right stuff. Knight Rider again. Gray stroke. Gray stroke. I gray stroke. I don't know what to call it. I'll do like two more. I'm already at another 30 minutes. These cards are made in Providence Brown. That's a good crack. Michael Keaton is the best Batman. There's there's no one to convince me otherwise. Um, cool World. Ralph Bashkis. I forgot he did that. He did um like Fritz the Cat and he did, I can't remember the other one. It was really I have it on tape. I paid a lot for it actually on tape. But second, Shadow Chaser, Universal Soldier, Young Indiana Jones. I don't know who that guy is who played him. I never watched the show. I just remember. When I think Young Indiana Jones, I think of River Phoenix. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Big. Why she left Star Trek. What a, what a mistake that was. Short Circuit 2. The Blob. Oozes back. The Blob, one of the, the best horror movies of the 80s. It's so good and gross and just one of the best remakes of any movie ever so, they live john carpenter roddy piper great they live twilight zone jake's journey my by child's play um they're remaking toxic avenger um i have a ton of toxic avenger stuff I, I, maybe they'll do a video on that uh, gene ronberry's ufo encounter brett spiner won't shake anybody's hand. He's one of those guys. But you know what? He doesn't want to get sick, so I, I, I get that. Last Action Hero is an awesome movie that just got annihilated by Jurassic Park. Uh, and maybe Super Mario Bros. I don't know how they did in the theater, but I know I saw it and a lot of other kids did. But Last Action Hero is very good. Um, doesn't get any love. Speaking of Jurassic Park, this Odo. 
Cardboard Universe Senator from Mars Attacks. Sci-fi trading cards from Mars Attacks, the next generation. That's, hey, how appropriate. Adventures of Baron Munchausen. It's a cool movie. I'm not a I'm not a big fan of uh, I I don't know Terry Gilly. I don't I don't know why I don't love his stuff. I mean, he's too too British for me. But as a kid, I liked it. I liked the little guy that could run really fast. Fly two with Eric Stoltz coming off a of Rocky Dennis. So they're like, hey, who we need to find somebody that can play a deformed person? Get Eric Stoltz on the phone. I don't know, what is that? Leviathan. So, when did, I don't know, X Files, I don't know when that came out, but I haven't seen an X Files card. Maybe it was 93. I think this will be the last pack in 31 minutes. Good crack. And they're probably all the same. Yeah, so, so that's gonna be it. And uh, I still got quite a few packs left, actually. So I hope you enjoyed this video of more Starlog cards. Uh, Starlog cards, part two. Um, this will not be a trilogy, unfortunately. And if you liked it, like it. And uh, subscribe if, if you're not. And I'm gonna do more cards like this and uh, some other things uh, soon some book reviews and um, some movie reviews with with better production quality that isn't just this and uh you know also at 100 subscribers i will have a not a contest i'm just gonna do like a random drawing but it will be like i'm not gonna send you some some junk it's gonna be something 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 nice something i would want if i was getting something like that so, if you enjoyed it, like I said, like it, subscribe, or not, dislike it, whatever you want to do. Uh, I just, uh, I hope you either liked it or you hated it, one or the other. And uh, it's getting late, and I'm rambling. Good night.